Hey what's up guys, Dan from Delicate Detailing here and today I will be applying IGO Wheel which is their one year uh, ceramic coating specifically designed for wheel because of their high, uh, high temperature durability resistance or resistance durability and I'll be applying it to my new new rear wheels so as I, as I told you guys in one of my later videos that my old, rear, uh, my old new wheels when they were drilling them, they kind of cracked them and then repainted them, and then I uh, I complained about that, so they sent me new ones. So these are the new ones that I will be ceramic coating. I already polished the lips on these. I did not include that in the video, so now I'll just be uh, doing a quick uh, pre-coat wipe down, IGL pre-coat, and this all comes in the kit. I'll, I'll open up the kit and show you guys exactly what comes in the kit. Now this is your bottle of wheel and I've already used most of the product on the, sorry I'm way off camera here, I don't know if you guys can see this but this is the bottle of wheel here and I've already used most of the bottle on the original set of wheels but I still probably have a third left which is more than enough to do the, these rears and that is that will be the face and the barrel of the wheels, two coats of each to complete the ceramic coating. I'll give you guys just a quick read on the directions just so you guys are informed on the application process. So uh, curing time ready to be buffed off in two to five minutes, ready to be layered or water contact in two hours. Two layers is the recommended uh, for most IGL coatings except for IGL Premier which is their sealant. So uh, yeah like I said ready to be uh, ready to be layered or water contact in two hours and a full cure in three to five days. During this period, the car should not be uh, washed with any car, uh, any car shampoo, all-purpose all cleaner, or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get started. And it also comes with your application uh, with your application block, suede applicators. I'm going to use the microfiber applicators just because uh, I used them last time on the wheels to get in all the nooks and crannies, and it worked great. And the pre-coat does come in the kit as well. Everything you need to do the, uh, the ceramic coating comes in the kit. I just left it on the shelf. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my safe towels. Now these are the 365 edgelesses that I will be using for pre-coat. 365 edgelesses by the Ray Company, if you've seen them in our uh, Ray Company unboxing videos. These sweet little bottles also have a safety trigger, so they're pretty cool actually and they work great. Now I believe I already pre-coated uh, pre these, but they've been sitting in the box, so just to uh, get rid of all the dust or anything that can accumulate on them, I'm going to pre-coat them again. And pre-coat is basically just uh, IGL's fancy IPA. They do put some uh, orange peel smell in there, so you do get a hint of oranges. Try and get all the nooks and crannies in the faces, the rivets. And I just flipped it over, spray some more to do the lips. And I, I only polished the lips. I didn't actually polish the face of the wheels.
So I'll just be showing you one wheel because there's no point to show you the same uh, the same method on the second wheel. And also, I don't know if I have enough memory to show you guys the full application on both wheels. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-coat the next wheel and then stay tuned. We'll get to the actual ceramic coating. Okay guys, we're back and we're using fresh microfiber applicators that I just unwrapped out of the pack. So go ahead and take our bottle of IGL wheel. I'm just going to grab a cheap microfiber since this is a used bottle. You're going to see, open this up and you're going to see all those crystals here. See that's probably the worst I've seen it. Just from probably leaving it for so long. Now I, ha I have seen ways to kind of get rid of the crystals but we're just going to give it a quick wipe with the microfiber. I'm going to do it off camera just to try and not create a mess. So you can see those are all the crystals that came off it. That's just the coating, excess coating actually hardening, hardening so you know it's actually doing its job. Now that we got the most off I'll show you. So here's a quick tip. I've seen guys actually cut the fingertips off gloves and then put them over the cap and then actually put the cap back on and it creates like a fresh seal so you won't have any uh, actual crystals built, uh, any crystal build up like that. So as you can see it's perfectly clean now. Maybe not the threads but that's mostly from the lid. Uh, the actual top dispenser is perfectly clean. So we're going to go ahead and take our microfiber applicator block and right on the tip and the edge here, that's where I'm going to apply and we're going to do about, to prime the microfiber applicator block, we're going to do about six drops. Now the reason why we're doing it there is to specifically get in all the nooks and crannies of the wheels. And I'm just going to get a time count right now, it is exactly 126 so in two hours I'll be able to do the second coat on the faces so I'm just going to start off with the lips here now you want to put some even pressure Go nice and slowly, no need to rush. Just work your way around. Now since I have the chrome finish on the lips, it's fairly easy to see what you've coated and what you haven't. Just gonna apply a little bit more, and then since the applicator's already primed now, three to four drops will do it. So that's basically the faces, now I'll just do the rivets. And you guys always want to be wearing gloves while doing this. Because your finger oils can get trapped in the coating and actually leave high spots and then your fingerprints will be all over whatever you're trying to coat. And the reason why there's two layers is because uh, IGL Poly, you basically do two layers and that's their one layer, uh, that's their one year coating, it's basically the same. But on their higher, uh, on their higher coatings like Kenzo, they actually have a base coat and a top coat and they're different. So you have to apply obviously the base coat first, then the top coat. But uh doesn't matter for IGL poly or wheel, you just apply two layers. 
Now what I'm doing there is I just saw a little like, I don't know, a high spot, so I'd say starting, so I just try and even it out. Level it out, you should say. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more. As you guys can see, a lot of coating, or a little bit of coating goes a long way. Another spot form in there. Do a couple more drops. So that is basically it. And then basically, like I said, you start to buff off in three to five minutes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start buffing off the lips pretty much right as we speak. Now the only problem I really run into when doing coatings is the microfibers I use leave little hairs behind and it's not so much a problem, it's just kind of frustrating. And I've tried it with the cheap Costco's compared to the Ray Company edgelesses like I've just used and they all seem to leave hairs so one doesn't kind of help the other. So like I started off at the lip so I'm just going to go ahead and buff off the lip. Now it's coming off pretty smooth. No complaints. If it is smearing you need to wait longer. You haven't wait long, uh, waited long enough. But this isn't a ceramic coating that kind of drags. Actually, when you put on the second coat, you'll notice that it, uh, it's just it's whatever you're uh, coating. Like I did the barrel of the wheels last time, and on the first coat, it was pretty sticky, being like it's not a finished surface. And then after this, doing the second coating, it just applied like butter because the microfiber applicator wasn't sticking on all the metal. Now the lips are pretty easy to do. You just gotta make sure you get in between these spokes here. So that's what I'm gonna go over now. Just noticing a little extra residue in those corners there, so make sure you get them out. Otherwise, if you don't, that's how high spots are created. And those are, you'll notice those like crazy because of the finish on the wheels. And now I'm kind of working my way on the rivets too. We're still trying to get in those nuts and crannies. Now when I'm done with these towels, I will wash them and basically use them for interior towels. I won't throw them out, but uh, I don't use them on paint anymore, that's for sure. Because I noticed uh, if you do try and use them like on paint or even with QD or something, it doesn't, uh, doesn't soak up fabric the same anymore, so the coating does still affect it, even if you wash it right away. 
So I'm just going to make sure I get those rivets really good, get in there. And it's starting to feel butter smooth, guys. Go ahead and face it now. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab another towel, guys. It's good to always keep rotating the towels and getting new ones because you don't want to be just spreading around, spreading product around. You want to be wiping off excess product. I'm gonna rip off that tag. Sometimes I leave them on just so you can know what side the tag is and then just avoid using that side completely. But with something as delicate as the wheels here, Take them right off. Now after I'm done wiping everything off, I'll go around with a little uh, LED swirl light and make sure I got off all the high spots. And kind of try to work these hairs out too. There's not a whole lot to it, guys. Well, first I'll just go around and check the lips first since those are the things I coated first. And oh, try and not let your skin touch it because the oils of your skin, like I said, will leave prints in the coating. Yeah, I got a high spot here. And no high spots on the lips now. Hey guys, we're back with the second layer of IGO wheel. So we're gonna go ahead, and it's 340 by the way. And I did the first coat at 140, so you gotta give it two hours between each layer. And for IGO wheel, like I was saying before, I don't, which I don't know if you got, I'm just gonna wipe off the crystals again with an old microfiber. You do two layers of the same IGO wheel to complete the IGO wheel coating with higher uh, coatings like IGO, Kenzo and Quartz, you have a base layer and a top layer. So I'm going to go ahead and prime this new applicator again. Do about six to eight drops right on the edge so I can get in all the nooks and crannies. So I think you guys can see, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and start with the lip again. And you'll see like it just almost a wet gasoline like I think I'm going to put it too much on the edge. I need a little bit on the surface too. So I'm just going to go ahead and coat that a little bit too. Go ahead and get a nice even layer. There we go. Since the finish on my rims, or with the finish on my rims, it's pretty easy to see the coating as we're going here. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and try and get in the nooks and crannies between the spokes there and create a nice even layer. Now you don't want to go too fast, but you want to apply moderate pre pressure so you don't get any uh, missing spots. And a little goes a long way. Since I put a little on, on the edge there too, I'm probably going to be able to go around this whole lip without applying any more. trying to even it out there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead, apply about three to four drops, and we're going to go ahead and do the rivets now. Try and get in between here as good as possible. That's why I put it on the edge. Now I'm just going to go apply it on the other parts of the rivets there. Go ahead and apply a little bit more product. And we'll start applying it to the face of the wheels. try to smooth it out there. Sometimes where you end up, it kind of ends up a little. I think I did this one more. I'll do it again. I'm not sure. There we go. And then I'll hit the sides of the face. Try and stick with like one section at a time so you don't forget and mix up what you did already. I'm just going to go around a little bit, try and get a better view. That's why I do it on the table, easy access, and you're not bending your back over like on the uh, bent over, breaking your back like if I've seen people uh, place them on the boxes too, but that's way too low. Okay, so now I'm just going to try and get in here as much as possible. Do the center caps again. Then basically three to five minutes, I'm gonna start, it's been three to five minutes already. So I'm gonna start again by just buffing off the lips. Yeah, you guys are still with me. I got a low battery, so I'll have to change the battery out soon. Maybe I'll do that after buffing off the product so you guys don't miss anything so like I was saying before if it starts smearing you guys need to wait a little bit longer but it seems to be coming off pretty good I've never had any problems and it's not a product that really drags so it's pretty easy to get off as well
Bear with me, guys. You might cut out with me just because of the battery this time. I don't know if you guys know, but Ryan actually broke the old camera, so I had to go buy a new one. And I'm still getting used to this one. Like I said before, I think I'm going to need a new SD card for this one. And just go in the order, basically, as you applied it. And then after I wipe it all off, I'll go over it again with a little swirl light. Make sure I didn't miss any residue, which will leave high spots. Just trying to get these lips really good because these are the hardest crevices to get into. And I know that will leave high spots. But this product is pretty forgiving, even if you notice a spot a little bit later, you should be able to wipe it off or apply a little bit more and then wipe it off. So now I'm going to go ahead on the faces. Flip the towel. Always flip the towel so you're not just spreading the coating around. And then after when, I'm going to, after when I'm done with the light, that's when I'll worry about the hairs. Try and gather up the hairs and wipe them off as best as possible. Good, you guys are still with me. Sorry guys, I'm a little quiet, I'm just kind of focused now. You guys get the gist of it. The big key is just try and have good lighting and then go over your work. Which uh, I try and have Ryan do. I'll try and have him here too. Last time he did uh, one wheel, I did one wheel and then we switched over and went over each other's work. And I think that worked really well actually. Second pair of eyes always helps. So I'm going to pull out that spotlight. So we have it. You guys still with me here? Sweet. Bear with me there camera, we're almost on the batteries. I know, about to go. Now I didn't polish these to perfection, but they're sure of a hell of a lot better than they were. key to this again is just to go over slowly and then in certain sections make sure you just don't miss any spots as soon as you bring them out to the sunlight man that's when you'll get it but yeah they look really good just don't worry about those hairs and I find constantly switching your angles always helps too because you might see something
I don't know, now that I can see a little bit better because I closed the garage door and my dad was working on the truck earlier. So that's why I couldn't before, but I'm seeing all the hairs now. Just want to show you guys how much product left is left and we've already basically finished the face of this wheel. We still got the barrels to do. Although the barrels I believe takes more product. I don't know if you guys can see that how much focus but probably got like yeah a fifth of the bottle left. Seems to lose focus the way I bring it if I bring it in close. Or probably to here on the bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and switch batteries.